today we're going to do Go Math 12.3, which is writing equations from tables. This is a really important concept for you guys going forward to do algebra. So make sure you're paying close attention and doing the um, classwork, which today is going to be worksheet 12.3. Okay, let's get started. So to write an equation based on a table, uh, what we're going to be looking at is the relationship that's between x and y, okay? So the relationship between two variables where one variable depends on the other, it can easily be represented in a table and in an equation. So sometimes what we do is we look at the numbers that are in the tables and then we take the relationship that we see and we write it using an equation, okay? So an equation represents the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. So every time we write these um, equations, it's going to be how we can get y from x each time. So when there's no real world situation to consider, what we usually say, and I told you guys this already, is that x is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. So y is always going to be depending on x, just like we talked about yesterday. So for our first example, we're looking at this table. When x is 1, y is a half. When x is 2, y is 1. When x is 3, y is 1 and a half. When x is 4, y is 2. And when x is 5, y is 2 and a half. So on the side, I'm just going to write this. We always want to know how to get y from x. Okay? For now. That's what we're looking at. So when we write our equation, it's always going to be y is equal to, okay? So I want to know how could I get y from x? So what would I have to do to the x to get this number? What would I have to do to this x to get this number? And remember, when we're talking about these types of relationships, it's always going to be the same for now, okay? So if you're looking at these decimals and scratching your head, look at the whole numbers and try to get your rule from the whole numbers instead. It'll be much easier. <clears throat> So how could I get from 1, from 2 to 1? And how could I get from 4 to 2? What would I be doing? Well, I'd be dividing by 2, right? Does that work for all of these? If I divide 1 by 2, do I get a half? I sure do. If I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. If I divide 3 by 2, I get 1 and a half. Dividing 4 by 2, I get 2. And dividing 5 by 2, I get 2 and a half. So that would be our rule here. The thing is, we're not going to be writing this, and I'll show you this to you because this is not what we're doing. We're not going to be writing x divided by 2, right? We said this is a no-no in algebra now. So there's two ways that we could write this. We can either do y is equal to x divided by 2, okay? Or, remember from fifth grade, dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we could also write this as y is equal to half of x or one half times x. Okay, so either one of these is going to be correct. Okay, so half of one is a half, half of two is one, half of three is a half, and so on. So either of these are correct. And I'll just tell you that in algebra, this is how we would have written it. Okay, so you might want to get used to doing that. So let's look at the next table we have here. This is a new one. There is a different relationship between x and y. So remember, we always want to know how to get y from x. So our goal is to look, it should be y equals, our goal is to look and see what would I do to this number to get that one, okay? It's not always as obvious as what we just saw. Okay, so let's take a look. This one is going to be pretty simple, but I'm just saying it's not always going to be as easy as this one. So how could I get from 2 to 5? Does it always have to be multiplication and division? No. As you saw in previous examples where we're looking at relationships, um, it can be adding or subtracting, right? So how could I get from 2 to 5? How could I get from 4 to 7? And all the way up here, I could I get from 10 to 3? I could add 3. And if that's what you think your rule is, just go through and make sure that they work for each pair of numbers because sometimes it may seem like you have 
an answer and it's not going to actually work out for you. Like for example, if you looked here and you said, oh, I could get one from two by subtracting one. That would work here, but then if you go to the four and you subtract one, you get two, that's not right. So make sure you check your rule on all of the pairs. So two plus three does give me five. Four plus three gives me seven. Six plus three gives me nine. 8 plus 3 gives me 11, and 10 plus 3 gives me 13. So that's the right rule. So now you just have to translate it. So to get y, I take my x and I add 3. That's my rule. Okay? Now if you wrote 3 plus x, you wouldn't be wrong, right? Because addition is commutative. And that's it, guys. Nice and simple. So let's do the your turn. So for each table, we're going to write an equation that represents y in terms of x. So let's do what we've been doing. Pause it. Try the three, uh, four of these on your own, and then you can come back and check your answers. Okay, so here are the solutions. Number three, I'm guessing, may have given you a little bit of a problem, but I'm going to talk about how you can figure that out easily. Number two, when you look from x to y, you can see that you can get each of these y values by subtracting 2 from x. So your equation is going to be y is equal to x minus 2. I take my x and subtract 2 each time and I get the x value. I'm sorry, y. Take your x, subtract 2, and you get your y each time it works out. So for number 3, you may have been looking and, and initially you may say, oh, I can add 15 to 10 and get 25. But then when you look here, you'll see that that won't work. So what you can do instead is you can take the y and divide by the x to figure out what number you're multiplying by. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Thank you, everyone. Um, and then you take the others and divide to make sure that you get the same thing. And what you'll see here is you can find a common factor here of 2.5. So if you take your x value and multiply by 2.5, you will get the y value. So the equation would be y equals 2 and a half times x. Okay? Um, and then for number 4, this one's pretty easy. You can see you just add 5 each time and then you get your y value. So that's y equals x plus 5. And then finally... <clears throat> for number five, if you look at the first one, you're going to probably get confused. So look at the other two and see what the relationship is. You may have thought add one, but make sure you check here because if you add one to two, you'll get three, not four. So the real rule here is that we're multiplying by two. So we're taking the x value, multiplying by two to get y. So it's y is equal to two times x. Okay, guys, so that's how we write an equation from a table. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how we could use these tables and equations to solve a real world problem. So for example two, we're looking at a certain percent of a sale price of paintings in a gallery are going to be donated to char charity. The donation will be $50 if a painting sells for $200. Okay. The donation will be $75 if the painting sells for $300. We want to figure out what's going to be the amount of the donation if a painting sells for $1,200. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own table. Okay, so we have, which one is depending on the other? That's the first thing we have to figure out. The donation <clears throat> is depending on the amount that the painting sells for. So the donation is going to be the dependent variable, which is the Y. So we make our table, X is always on top. Y is your dependent variable, remember? and x is your independent variable. So the independent variable is going to be how much the painting sells for. The donation is depending on that. So if the painting sells for $200, the resulting donation is 50. The next piece of information they gave us was if the painting sells for $300, the donation is gonna be 75. So what we're gonna do is we're going to figure out the rule so that we can figure out how much the donation is going to be if the painting sells for $1,200, okay? So let's figure out what is the relationship 
between these two. What I really want to know is, looking, this one is going to be easier to use, but what I really want to know is how could I get 50 from 200? Okay, so let's think about that. I know I'm going to be dividing. What you can do is you can work backwards or you can divide the 200 by 550 to see what you would get. What we're really doing is 50 divided by 200, okay? But we're gonna do it this way just to show you. 200 divided by 50 instead as we're gonna go backwards. So try to remember that I've showed you guys in the past when you have these zeros that you can do them like this and you can cross off the extra zeros right? So 200 divided by 50 is going to be the same as 20 divided by 5, which is 4. So what if I was going backwards to get to 200 from 50, I'd be multiplying by 5. So to get from 200 to 50, I am dividing by 4, All right? So to get y from x, I'm dividing by 4. Now let's see if that works here too. We want to check. So if I take 300 and I divide it by 4, do I get 75? Let's see. 4 goes into 37 times, which is 28. Then when I subtract here, I get 2, bring down my 0. 4 goes into 25 times. So yes, it works. So my pattern is to figure out the amount of the donation, you take the amount that the painting sold for and divide it by 4. So if I was going to write an equation here, I would say that I can get y by taking x and dividing it by 4. And another way of writing that, of course, would be taking a fourth of x. Okay, so that is two ways you could write it. We still have to figure out what the amount of the donation is going to be if it's $1,200. So if I used my equation, I would say that the amount, which is x, of the, of the painting sold for divided by four, okay? And that's gonna give me a donation of $300. So you could fill that in here if you want, 300, okay? Okay, so to wrap this up, we're gonna do the your turn. Um, what I'll do is I'll help you set up the table and then we'll pause and you can do the rest yourself. So when Ryan is 10, his brother Kyle is 15. When Ryan is 16, Kyle will be 21. When Ryan is 21, Kyle will be 26. We wanna write and solve an equation to find Kyle's age when Ryan is 52. So we're trying to find Kyle's age. So Kyle's gonna be your dependent variable. Kyle's age is depending on Ryan's age. So the independent variable is gonna be Ryan and your dependent variable is going to be Kyle. We're trying to find his age when we're given Ryan's age. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill in your info. We know that when Ryan's 10, Kyle is 15. And we know when Ryan is 16, Kyle's going to be 21. Yes, you're all thinking of Mateo. Um, and when Ryan is 21, <laughs> Kyle's going to be 26. So you're going to write and solve an equation to find what Kyle's age is going to be when Ryan is 52. All right, so go ahead and give it a shot. All right, here's the solution. This was pretty easy, I hope. I think probably setting this up was trickier. But um, what I did first was I wrote out what I want my equation to be in words before I translated it into algebra. So looking from Ryan's age to Kyle's age, to get Kyle's age, I'm taking Ryan's age and adding five to it. And you, of course, check each time that that works. So in other words, Kyle's five years older than Ryan, right? But to write it out so that I can easily write an equation, I wrote Kyle's age is equal to Ryan's age plus five more. So as an equation, I just used K for Kyle and R for Ryan. And I wrote K is equal to R plus five. And then I was easily able to figure out Ryan's age using the equation by replacing Ryan's age with 52, which is what they asked, right? They wanted to know Kyle's age when Ryan was 52. 
So we, we added 5 to 52, and we found that Kyle will be 57 when Ryan is 52. So that is that, guys. Have fun.